Hi beautiful souls, it's Tan here today with another video in our Saturn series talking about the five tips that I have for Saturn in the 11th house. So if you haven't watched my video on Saturn in the 11th house where I talk about the karmic cycles of the Saturn placement, I highly recommend that you watch that video first, so links up above and description box below, and you can come back and watch this video so you can have a more comprehensive understanding of the karmic cycles of this Saturn placement. So if you have Saturn in the 11th house, Saturn in Aquarius, or Capricorn ruling the 11th house, these five tips are for you when you are reaching your Saturn return or before your Saturn return to sort of prepare for it. Or you can use these tips at any point in your life. So the first tip that I have for Saturn in the 11th house is to discover who your real friends are. Friendship is one of the greatest gifts that we can really have in this life because a really good friend can last you throughout your whole entire life. When, you know, romantic relationships, they may not do that for you because sometimes our romantic partners turn out to be our open enemies. But with friendships, if we can find out who the real friends, our real friends are and if we can work, you know, to maintain those relationships, then that is a really, really great gift to have. One of the blocks that Saturn in the 11th house might have to face is recognizing genuine friendships as well as overcoming certain blocks that, that may block you from forming real good friendships. So, so if you're looking to you know, spot genuine friends, the first sign is going to be tolerance and acceptance. You know, we're living in a world where our parents and our families and sometimes our you know boyfriend and girlfriend is really you know putting a lot of pressure and expectation on us to do certain things but that's why we have friends because friends don't put expectations on each other and you know friends are there for you to be your weird crazy self and accept you for that so that is a sign of a real genuine friend the second sign of a genuine friend is someone who's gonna call you out when you're really doing something wrong because friends that don't call you out friends who you always have a good time with even though you may be you know engaging in you know bad behavior and things like that but they still don't say anything that's a kind of a superficial you may want to think that they could be a superficial friend but if a friend calls you out for something that you've done that hurts other people or that you've done that is not so right that's a really good and genuine friend the next sign of a really genuine friend is some, of course, you know, somebody who is there for you. Um, you know, when you really need somebody to talk to, when you really are in an emergency and there's nobody else around, but you know, that friend is just there. So that's a really good sign that that person is a genuine friend. As well as bringing peace into your life and not stress. If a friend is bringing you a lot of stress, you may want to consider whether that friend is maybe, you know, a toxic friend. So if you, you know, every time they call you and you feel like, oh, I don't want to pick up the phone, or they ask you to go out and you feel like, oh, I really don't want to go, you may want to consider why you're feeling that way. Is it, you know, are they saying things um, or are they doing certain things when you are with them that does not make you feel like you're at peace? And the last sign of a really good, genuine friend is support and keeping their jealousy in check. So this means that, you know, a, a really good friend will support your dreams. They will support your loving relationships. They will support whatever's going on with your family rather than being jealous if you get that promotion and they didn't or being jealous that you're in a great, you know, real, um, romantic relationship and they're not or being jealous that you have a better family than them. So something to watch out there, you know, to decipher between a good friend and maybe a toxic friend. Now, some barriers that Saturn in the 11th house may have with regards to forming real genuine friendships might be missing opportunities. Missing the opportunities that are in front of you to form a real intimate uh, a friendship rather than a material type of uh, a relationship or friendship. So 
of course, you know, it's very obvious that if somebody were to present opportunities for you that you can benefit from materially, meaning they can promote your job, they can give you some money, that kind of a thing, of course, it's obvious that, you know, that, that's a, that person, you can maybe, you know, take something from that person, that's fine. But if that person is also presenting you with an opportunity for you to bond more intimately without having to get anything from them, and you're not seeing the opportunity and you're miss, missing that out, that is one of the first blocks. Because, you know, missing out an opportunity to do something or form a relationship with someone where they don't, they don't have anything to give you and you don't have anything to give them except the connection, that is a true friendship. All you need is that connection. You don't need or they don't need from you and you don't need from them job advancement or, you know, advancing reputation. You just need the connection. And this can come in terms of a mentality where you feel like you know, the glass is just half empty. And so when an opportunity comes for real connection, your mentality is still in this Saturnian mentality of, oh, the glass is just half empty, nothing's gonna come out from this connection anyways, because you don't see immediately how they're gonna benefit you on a material level, so you turn away from that. So next time there's an opportunity in front of you to simply just connect, go for it. And you know, the second block to really achieving um, a good friendship may be a lack of time and energy. Knowing what gives you energy will give you energy so you can have energy for other things in your life like friendships. So if you get energy from sleeping all day, then maybe you should consider sleeping all day so that you can have some time for the people in your lives rather than you know being very busy with your career and not really having time for forming connections. And the last block might be in terms of, this is probably very common for Saturn in 11th house, is lacking authenticity in your connections with another person. And I'm going to talk a little bit throughout this video how to be more authentic, shall we say, but you know, the reason why you may lack authenticity is because you know, Saturn, uh, the 11th house, has a reputation for being a social butterfly, meaning that socializing at the expense of really finding out who you really are, so that opposite house, the 5th house, may be lacking. Um, and so when we don't you know, spend enough time with ourselves to get to know ourselves, then we don't know what it is that we have, we don't know what our real vulnerabilities are. And to be really authentic with someone is to be vulnerable and is to um, bring out that vulnerability and be, even though it makes us seem like a weirdo or a freak, that is going to you know, allow that really good friendship connection to be made. So this leads me to my next point, which is tip number two, and that is to let your freak flag fly, Saturn in the 11th house, Saturn in Aquarius, and Capricorn will in the 11th house. We are in the age of Aquarius. If you're gonna let your freak flag fly at any time in history, this is the time to do it. And the first step to really being able to let your freak flag fly authentically is to be self-aware. Being self-aware is, is, you know, is like finding your authentic self. It's knowing that everybody is different, not because of the way we dress, the way we behave, or the people we associate with, or what we accomplish in the world, but we're really you know, different because of our pain. The pain that we have, the Pluto pain that we have of our past, is really what makes all of us different from each other, and how we deal with that pain how we identify with it and make it our strength. That is our real authenticity. The way we let our, our pain empower us, that is who we are. And our pain can really give us that depth of character that makes us different from other people. I mean, think about Lady Gaga. A lot of her, you know, she's considered to obviously have her freak flag out everywhere. But in order for her to do that, she's in touch with her pain and she channels her pain into her work and it comes out in weird and crazy ways but it's true to her own personal pain we have to learn to love that part of ourselves 
And you know, if we've had childhood traumas, for example, we've got to learn to love the fact that we've overcome that. But we have to overcome that first, and we may need to do that by being self-aware, by you know, sort of seeing a therapist, by um, looking at our memories, going back through our memories of our childhood, and doing a bit of emotional purging in order for us to love ourselves again. And then we let it out. The next thing that you can really do to let out your freak flag is to not filter yourself. And this is really hard for a lot of people because every time we really have this flow that we want to do or say something, we, are, we hold back because we think that somebody's going to judge us or it's going to sound weird or people are going to hate us. So we just hold back. But the truth is that nobody really cares as much as you think they do. They really don't. You can be having dinner with a group of friends, saying something really weird, they're probably gonna forget about the next day. Even if you're saying something that's totally against the norm, but if it's true to what you really think, and there's nothing wrong with what you say, but it's true to what you really think, the next day people may not forget about it, but they're definitely thinking about it. And that could be you making a really big impact in one way or another. My third tip for Saturn in this house, in the 11th house, is to find your community. Of course, the 11th house rules, you know, social groups, organizations. So, the first really, you know, good way to find your community is to let go of this mentality that immediately, you know, when people think about finding their group, they immediately think about a physical group, meaning that I have to know this person, this person, this person, bring everybody together and do something. When you're really forming a really authentic group, it's about that one-to-one -one connection first. Before you can get to the 11th house, you have to pass the 7th house, right? So by forming close relationships with people one-to-one, -one, other people are going to be drawn to that and they're going to come to you because of the really great connection partnerships that you've made one-to-one -one first really looking for groups or communities to join that are of your passion, that are of your freak flag. It's going to be important here as well as inviting people to join your group based on your freak flag and see if they want to try out your freak, fla freak flag a little bit. That's a really good way to form really authentic groups and communities. The fourth tip that I have for this Saturn placement in the 11th house is to study or get accustomed to group psychology. This placement has the potential to really understand group psychology and to really use that for the advancement of society as a whole. So, you know, this can, inclu this can include studying, you know, groupthink, social pressure, belonging, the theory of belonging, the halo effect. Through understanding group psychology, you will find that radical ideas Ideas that can change the world are never really formed from the group because there's theories of like competition and somebody needing to be the leader and then sort of dismissing others' ideas. You know, that's all group psychology, but radical ideas can really be brought to the society when it comes from the individual and then brought to the group, not through brainstorming in the group, but through the individual. So that means that it would be really, really beneficial for this Saturn placement if you could evaluate your own personal radical ideas um, and how you can bring that into a specific group. And how can your radical ideas really progress on a higher level consciousness as a whole? Because you really have the ability to do that. And the fifth tip that I have for Saturn in the 11th house, Saturn in Aquarius and Capricorn ruling the 11th house, is to make group make raising group consciousness your goal one of your goals in life but the medium does not really matter you can raise consciousness through making art you can do it through medicine you can use it through the media you can use it through literature or politics the medium is up to you but the message that you have behind what you do is that enough to raise you know group consciousness it's really important with the Saturn placement that you put a spin onto the work that you create, that you want to bring to the public, um, that sort of challenges people's existing awareness. So it makes you feel like you're part of, or you're leading or joining some kind of a movement. 
to make the world a better place. And you know, because the 11th house rules the house of hopes and wishes and dreams, the further out, the bigger your dreams are, that's the better for this Saturn placement. And then, you know, what you're going to need to be working on after dreaming is to really plant a seed so that that seed of that dream grows. That's Saturn. So some books that I think is going to be really beneficial or really interesting for this Saturn placement is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. And I think that, you know, this book is a really great book. I absolutely love it and I think that it really talks about the ego, the collective ego and how, you know, everybody has an ego but in order to really progress humanity, we have to lessen our ego. Beautiful book. And another book that I would recommend is Group Psychology and the Analysis of the Ego by Sigmund Freud. And of course I think that, you know, Freud is a very interesting psychologist. And when he starts, you know, making theories about group psychology, Saturday the 11th house, you're gonna love that. Some movies or documentaries that I really think resonates with the Saturn placement is Human by, I'm probably gonna pronounce his name wrong, but Jan Arthas Bertrand. This, kind, this documentary interviews people from around the world and the different types of issues that they have in their own lives and how the right movement can be carried out in order to address these more common humanitarian issues. So I think it's a really beautiful um, documentary to watch. Oh, another a very, very interesting movie that really resonates with the Saturn placement is The Snowpiercer. This movie is a really great metaphor and a symbolism for our world today, guys. Our world today. And of course, you know, any documentary by Professor Brian Cox, any documentaries regarding space, I think that that is really going to, you know, expand the curiosities of the Saturn placement and it really gets us to think about the fact that there's really no limit to who we are. And you know, that we are just something really small in the vastness of the universe out there. Um, if you have the Saturn placement, do comment below and let us know if you've watched any of these movies, read these books, and tried out any of these tips, and what has your experience has been like. Um, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you haven't, if you already subscribed, thank you very much for coming along. I do birth chart readings, sinistry relationship readings, all the information is on my website, you can check that out. And yeah, I'll see you soon, beautiful souls, bye.